In this video I will show you my cinematic settings for the Sony A7 III with a new accessory that I am using lately. First of all, if you want a great punch in your videos, you can check up Epidemic Sound that I am using lately a lot for my cinematic intros. They have an awesome variety of tracks and titles that will help you achieve every mood in your video. You can search by mood, tempo, genre, places, length and enter a desired playlist with the top tracks to listen to the latest track added. There is also a vast variety of SFX sounds to juice up your videos. It's amazing for YouTubers and you can check my link in the description to get a 30 day free trial to test it. Second thing, I have made a lot of cinematic setting tutorials also for my other cameras and you can find them in the link in the description. Mavic 2 Pro, Osmo Pocket, Mavic Air, Mavic Pro original one. Oh man, I forgot the intro. Welcome back, I'm Mauro and let's get first to the field world 5 inch screen for my Sony a7 III that I am lately using so much and after that on the cinematic settings for my Sony a7 III. This is the field world 5 inch swivel screen that my Sony a7 III really missed a lot. Because you know, come on Sony, make that swivel screen. Because you almost nailed it on the a6400 a couple of days ago, so please. You can do it! I promised also my color grain tutorial for my Sony a7 III S-Log2 and get that airy greenish look. It will be available soon as a part 2 of this video. So if you are watching this in a week from now, the link should be in the description. Let's have a look on my swivelable screen that I lately started using for all my YouTube videos. Finally I can see my bald head. And a big shout out to Phil Ward for sending me over this screen and making possible this video. You can check them on the link in the description and find out more about this 5 inch screen and also their other screens on their webpage. Phil Ward's screen came seen with a call show adapter tilt arm mount, micro HDMI cable, sunshine mount for that bright sun out there and an operation manual. You can get some great accessories with it, like the extension cable mount where you can use it with your gimbal and the 7 inch tilt arm. You can select multiple mounting types with your adapter on your Moza Air 2 or mount it with the tilt arm on your Weeble Lab. The mounting plate is also designed to mount it on the Ronin S. You can power the screen also with a battery, Sony F970 or Canon LP E6 batteries. You can also power it through a 12V adapter and it has 4K output up to 4K DCI resolution, 8.4V output to power your camera, headphone monitor jack and mini USB firmware upgrade port. The bright HD screen came seen in 450 nits and brightness up to 440 ppl pixel density. On the upper part are the control buttons to operate the screen. In the menu settings you can adjust a lot of the built-in features, selecting the type of color display and perfecting your color view on the screen, selecting your aspect ratio and the screen settings options like on-screen time, backlight power and more. You can actually zoom in on the screen 16 times. The best option is to turn on the center marker and your save frame, if you want after that a different output when you edit it. Put the 9 girls for a better understanding of the composed shot. Select your anamorphic crop if you are using anamorphic lenses. Histogram, false colors, select the focus picking color and the overexposure warnings. On the top F1 and F2 buttons you can memorize your most used settings to toggle them off or on depending on what functions are you using the most. We are ready to enter the cinematic settings for the Sony a7 III and we are also entering the worst menu system in the world. Switch the mode shooting selector wheel to movie mode. Remember, I am showing you my cinematic settings and it doesn't have to be yours. So let's jump in. Entering the worst menu system in the world, we want to select manual exposure. We will be controlling here all the settings manually. If you want to switch it to auto mode, this video ends for you here. For the rest of you guys that are still here, let's continue. I will first switch to the 4K settings and then I will explain you when and how to shoot slow motion. 24 frames per second in 4K is my choice for that cinematic feel. I always try to film in 100 megabits to retain the maximum possible amount of data for a post color grading potential. I don't use S and Q modes because I want to control manually my slow motion. I don't use proxy recording because it takes more space on my card and I want to generate them 
through my Premiere Media Encoder for a better and faster editing speed. So let's leave them off. Autofocus dry speed normal. We will switch it to fast only in 120 frames per second. In 24 frames per second I found that the best focus transitions are in normal. The autofocus track sensitivity will be set to responsive. For the audio recording level I am filming with the Rode Video Micro and found that the volume 6 fits the best my needs. My marker display settings are set to 2.35.1 aspect ratio, just in case when I want that look applied in post, and it's easy to frame it immediately. I don't ever switch off them. On the page 4 I am always with the steady shot on, with the steady shot adjust on auto. I didn't find any problems having it on my gimbals. I'm also using the clear image zoom that allows you to zoom in on the sensor without losing details. Just be sure to use it on 4K. In Full HD, well, you will lose some details for sure. I have the zebra setting exposure guide set on. It works for me. I always like the overexposure warning zebras for a better exposure overall. I signed the custom key buttons for the movie mode just like follows. The custom button C3 is for my clear zoom, so I can punch in immediately if I need more punch on a shot where I don't have time to switch lenses. I use the left button of the control wheel for the picture profiles. I mostly use PP2 S-Log2 and PP4 Cine4. I will be talking this in my second part of the video that will be available in a couple of days. I set the custom button 1 for the white balance selector. The custom button 2 is to toggle autofocus or manual focus, to have the best fast way to switch from manual focus to autofocus. I use manual focus a lot in my product's BTS shots. I set the custom button C4 for the APS-C Super 35 switch mode, so I can reach that punch in zoom without losing quality, and adding the zoom from the C3 I can reach more than 100mm with my Zeiss 55. And well, REACH THE STARS! I am always using autofocus continuous in video mode when I need autofocus. I mostly use it on my gimbal where I don't have to think so much and I get excellent results in autofocus continuous. For the focus area I switch between focus zone if I have a bigger object that have to be focused one part of the picture or when I have a smaller object to focus I select the flexible L spot. That allows me to select just one part of the frame like focusing on the little Osmo pocket while taking BTS shots of my wife. It works excellent. Let's make now our custom memory options for filming in 4K 24 frame per second and for the slow motion. Enter the first drop down menu on your page 3 and you will select the memory option. Let's have a look on the settings. We want 4K 24 frame per second, 100 megabit, AF speed normal. Shutter speed double the frame rate to get that cinematic feel, so let's make it 50. F-stop 1.8 because I love that bokeh effect behind me. ISO 800 because this is the lowest ISO possible on S-Log2. I love filming in S-Log2 because it gives me a really great color grading potential. White balance daylight. You will always be able to change it if you need it like you always do. So let's get back to the memory option select it and press enter to memory the custom button 1. You will be able to use the save settings by switching the top dial on the number 1 and it will switch to the settings that we just made. Now we will make the same for the slow motion settings. Let's go back to adjust the settings. Full HD in 120 frames per second, 100 megabit option. Remember that we will have here more frames in the same video length, so you want to retain the maximum detail possible, so use 100 megabit. The autofocus dry speed should be fast. When you slow it down in post, the slow motion will look better with these focus settings, with better focus transitions. The shutter speed should be double the frame rate, so let's change it 1 to 250 of the second. Same f1.8, same base ISO 800 and S-Log2, because we want to have the best flexible color grading option in post. Let's get back to the first drop down menu page 3 and select the memory and save it to number 2. You will be able to recall your saved settings just by switching from 1 and 2. 1 for 4K 24 and 2 for the slow motion in 120 frames per second. 
last thing to retain a wide aperture of f1.8 and a low shutter speed always have to use ND filters to stop down your light I use variable ND filters that allows me to select the desired ND stop just by rotating the ring that's it, that are my cinematic settings for my Sony a7 III and I don't use anything else on my second video I will talk about S-Log2 and how to get that airy greenish look so stay tuned it will be available in a couple of days let's read some of your comments well today I will be short we have a comment from Manu the more nonsense the clearer my choice is long live the low budget Osm pocket long live the Osma pocket low budget thing can you let me know how much each setup cost in my comparison well the setup was really expensive and the cheapest one was about three thousand dollars so the Osm pocket is 10 times lower the price we have just another comment Cloud Johnson I don't mean to be racist or anything but you sound exactly like Vlad from Hotel Transylvania you can't give him the love he deserves because he's I will hunt you down just like Andreas Hem in his last vlog just kidding Instagram feature because I will have a kid too another thing I will be getting the Zion Crane 3 for a review and test and also the Osbot tail so stay tuned thumbs up if you liked it subscribe for that cinematic awesomeness with the bell ring icon to get notified every time I make a new video and see you on my next one